Hi, everybody. Let me get my stuff together. Are you ready for some really cool stuff? Well, I don't know why I called it Mokumegane, because it's not really Mokumegane. It's... I don't know what it is. It's something. Okay. <laughs> but I promise you, it will be pretty. So, as I said, you need some... Um, whatever you have, metallics, trans, um, pearlescence, whatever is your choice color that would work well together. Bonsoir, Valfe, Cecile. Hi, Serenity. So, um, you've seen something that starts like I, what I want to show you, but uh, the second part, I'm sure you haven't seen anywhere. Because I, I hope I came up with it. Maybe somebody else came up with it, too. You know, great minds think alike. Donc, j'ai dit que j'ai dit qu'on va faire uh, un mokumegane, mais je suis pas sûr que si c'est vraiment un mokumegane. So it might be quelque chose d'autre. Hi, Lena. Hi, Soile. So, to start with, you pick whatever pearlescence or metallics you want to use together. I just chose this combination because I think it works good. So, it's white pearl. 18 karat gold, gold and bronze, and of course, I'm going to have the black, right? So, uh, what we do first is some simple bullseye cane. So, that's all that it starts with. It's very, very high, Tina. It's very, very easy, isn't it? Just make sure you don't have any air bubbles. Always when I want to make sure that I don't have any air bubbles, of course, I would condition my clay very well, right? And, uh, of course, it mirrors. I don't know why Google Hangouts always mirrors my stuff. In my view, not in your view. In your view, it's fine. In my view, it's mirrored. And I uh, do like I would make a huge bead first, pressing very, very hard, because usually that uh, eliminates any air bubbles. And then I do my little cylinder for the um, bullseye cane. Make sure that you see everything. And I'm not going to wrap it. I'm going to first make all my little cylinders to make sure that they are all the same. Hi, Aldona. Okay, I do not know how to say because you got a weird username. Brit Dow. I don't know. How should I call you? Hello. But, yeah, I spent, uh, I had another bout of sleepiness yesterday because I went to my major monthly grocery shopping with my best friend. And then, of course, I got home. I was tired, blah, blah, blah. I fell asleep like 3 o'clock. At 5 o'clock, I woke up because somebody came to get something. Uh, I gave away my elliptical because obviously I cannot work with it. And then I slept till close to 1 o'clock a.m. And then at 1 o'clock a.m. I woke up and I've been awake since. I spent all night playing with a friend in Washington who I don't know if she's going to show up. She might be sleeping because we've been playing all night long together, playing and chatting on Skype. So, yeah. I've been up since 1 o'clock. And then I complained that I sleep too much, isn't it? But yeah, as I said, I slept a lot yesterday. So that's kind of a sign that I'm doing better, isn't it? Yeah. I do that on uh, Saturdays. And that's why I have my Sundays free to do this. 
And I know that most people do that on Saturdays, not on Sundays. That's uh, why I chose to do. Again, I choose uh, normally by what the analytics on my channel say. That's how I chose the Sunday for uh, my live events. But you can use the you can actually use just one color you know but or two colors but uh, the idea is that it has to be pearlescent or metallic any kind of clay that's got some mica powder in it oh yeah that makes sense then tina it's to leave the last day of the weekend off free of any kind of stuff. But I accomplished a lot. I did a lot of stuff last night that I was going to do. Coucou Delphine! Ah, okay. Ta machine à coudre est brillante. Oops, I'm sorry for the noise. You're at Wally World. That's nice. You're having fun, huh? Which Wally World? Which state? Is anybody affected by Neil right now? Anyone who's on? I hope it, I, I saw that it's a tropical storm right now. It's not a hurricane anymore. Okay, now let's wrap them. So you, you're affected, Tina, aren't you? I was watching before I started. I don't know if uh, you guys subscribe to, there's a channel and it's called actually Polymer Clay Artist. And uh, the channel owner is a guy who is an absolutely amazing sculptor. If you are not subscribed to his channel, he did a he took a short break. Oh goodness. Hi Teresa, you're still awake. I, that's what I was saying that we clayed all night together. That was like, huh, I don't know if she's going to still be awake and show up. But yeah, and I was uh, saying about uh, polymer clay artist, you might want to check his uh, channel he does more middle of the road stuff you know like canes and flowers stuff for beginners but you need to check his channel for his sculptures I mean he made some lizard things and some elephants and of course it's on a uh, speed sculpting it's just mesmerizing. You just sit there and watch him do his stuff for hours. He's absolutely fabulous. And I was watching uh, him and his wife are changing residences. And I know they were trying to buy a house. And they had all kinds of issues. 
and that's why he took a break for a few no he's not landscape he's just polymer clay artist no you're thinking about tom busler no no this is a new artist he's actually fairly young and he's got a beautiful voice, so nice and calm and relaxing. Oh, yes, he he made a wonderful butterfly. Did you watch his last, because uh, I was watching his last video right before I started the live. Uh, he's actually covering a vase using the, um, the butterfly cane. I can't wait. I didn't finish watching the whole video, but I'll go back and finish watching it once I'm done with the live. But I love his sculptures. Kids? What kids? What's kids? Lockers, yeah. <clears throat> you can make nice lockers and pirates chest and all kinds of stuff. Okay, now comes the fun part. You know what's the fun part, right? Reducing these. We are going to reduce them to smithereens. Lockets, okay. What kind of lockets? <laughs> Darn tablet, huh? It's not the tablet, it's the what you might call it? Autocorrect. Yeah, and honestly, considering the early hours we've been playing, I only flopped one thing, and that was just because of my mistake, because I didn't wait to reduce something more, and I was trying to reduce a cane that was only what three millimeters thick yeah that was not what kind of jewelry lockets where did you see those get this in half so I can reduce it further easier so anybody has any ideas and any requests that they would have for the holiday season they would want me to make a tutorial of If you do, I'm listening. Y a quelqu'un qui a des idées ou des demandes sur ce que il voulait ou elle voulait voir comme tuto pour les 
fête de Noël et du nouvel, année, du, du nouvel an. Okay, I'm slowly, slowly catching up on my stuff. Slowly, slowly. But the important part is that I'm catching up. And so, yeah, if people want to see stuff actually being done and you don't want to waste time watching me reducing i think it's going to take me about 10 minutes to do all these before i get to the real deal but i can tell you that i looked around i haven't found anything like what i want to show you i found some stuff that the first part looks a little bit like okay fairly similar but not the second part definitely not the second part and i as i said i called it mokumegane but it's not really mokumegane because it does not involve any kind of i mean not much not the deformation of a mokumegane in the way that you are used to Okay. There is some deformation, but not the way you're used to, in a completely different way. Yeah, it always helps when you cut with the sharp end. Ah, bon, et maintenant tu m'entends aussi? No, oh yeah, but that that's an old, he's a very old, I'm not sure even if he's still alive. That was Tina from the very beginnings of polymer clay. It's not... Uh, uh, I was thinking about a snowflake cane, to be very honest. I kind of had that on my schedule. But on ornaments, I was actually thinking of making uh, like miniature, remember like in the old time, they would put gingerbread men and stuff. I think that uh, a lot of people like that. And I want to do something that would also be simple that beginners could make. And that could, after that, be still used like a, a rear view mirror ornament or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything he did was beautiful. I mean, don't forget that he was the one who actually explored in detail the whole mica shift thing. I mean, it was Pierre Vulkos who practically discovered it, but the spreading of the technique was Mike Wiesler. Est-ce que tu vas fimoter avec moi? And see, because it's been a few good minutes since I made these, the middle is already cold and it has the tendency to lag behind. So I need to make sure that I warm it up in the middle too. Did you guys see that video that I posted on my... Uh, uh, C'est un de ces médaillons que tu peux avoir quelque chose, de, quelque chose dedans, comme une photo ou les cheveux de quelqu'un. Uh, 
did you guys see that video I uh, posted on my Facebook page with that lady um, reducing that absolutely humongous mammoth of a cane? Okay, this one I guess was not that cold in the middle. No worries, I'll have a lot of backings for my bracelets. Yeah, when I saw that video, I was like, oh my God, that's absolutely huge. I don't think I would even be able to lift that much cane. I forgot how many pounds she said it was. But you saw how she was doing like on it. Why can't you get to my Facebook? What's happening now? <laughs> it takes a bit of practice. But you know, if you don't practice, you'll never get the hang of it. These don't really have to be absolutely perfect, even if they are a little bit, the ends are a little bit, as long as they are not, don't have a, an empty middle. Good morning, Debra. You didn't miss it this time, huh? Because you have your browser with a lot of cash. Oh, what problems do you have, Serenity? If you just search on Facebook, Kalyana Design Tutorials, you'll find my page. Hello, Shirley. Yeah, set okay, Cecil. Is que tu as des tempêtes là-bas ou quelque chose? Was it only three pounds? It's. In, I think it was six. Hey, Tammy. You did catch one, huh? Did you miss my other one since I start, I changed the time? And this one does have the middle cold. Yeah, it was humongous. It was a mammoth. And how she reduced it, how flawlessly I was like, oh my God. There was absolutely no distortion at all. Yeah, there's an artist actually who makes a lot of animals covered in canes in Mille Fiori. He's quite big, quite huge artist, well-known name. We're almost done. The fun begins. Is anyone playing with me? I don't see Lawrence. She must not. She must have forgotten. Because usually 
she's the one who's playing with me. Good, I got one in two. I was watching the screen and I didn't pay attention to what I was doing. I guess this one was not very well conditioned, huh? Probably. I should have gone more passes through the pasta machine with it. But of course, you know, because we are working with pearlescence and metallics, you won't see the full beauty of the, the whole thing until it will be baked and varnished. Because that's the nature of pearlescence and metallics. Okay, we're going to call it a day with the reducing. And now what we are going to do, and this is the part that you probably saw other tutorials doing. And after we do this part, I promise you, at least I wasn't able to find this anywhere. So first we are going to make some spirals, snails, however you want to call them. And this should be a right size. I'm going to turn all the reduced sausages into snails and try to keep them color by color because you don't want to when we are we are going to stack them and you don't want two of the same color together hi Anastasia okay so this was a white and this is a oh, huh? I think that this is a gold 18 karat gold. I'm sorry, Cecile. Yes, this is the gold. Eighteen karat gold. This is the white. What song, Tina? Oh, see ya. This is the regular gold. This is also the regular gold. Eh bien sûr, c'est toujours mieux sur le logiciel. logiciel. Regular gold.
and this should be the bronze. No, this is the white gold. I think all this is the bronze. Eighteen karat gold. Euh, c'est pas qu'est-ce que c'est des réglisses. Non, je fais quelque chose qui est, on pourrait dire, entre le hidden magic et le mokumegane, quelque chose. C'est même pas comment lui l'appeler. Donc, cette, cette première partie peut être quelque chose que vous avez déjà vu sur l'internet, mais ce n'est pas en ce qui concerne la deuxième partie du tuto, si vous avez jamais vu. Ah, ok. That was yesterday. We have a new Winco store in my suburb. And I love, they have all this bulk area with all kinds of candy and licorice and all kinds of seeds and cheeses and cereal, all kinds of stuff. And uh, because Delphine was talking about chocolates, and I remember that they have all kinds of chocolates, including no sugar yes i had to tina from time to time i have to because they start getting too long and they i nick everything but they grow very fast and also when i need to groom my animals i don't want to have long, too long fingernails because uh i might hurt them okay now we are going to get pretty much half of the little spirals we did and we are actually going to deform the spiral a little you see what i'm doing do i need to get closer let me get closer uh, i'm going to i don't even know how to get closer on this one Okay. Give me a minute. I have a new camera, so Yeah, I don't want you change webcam. Oh, there we go. Okay, now I should be able to. Oh, where's my webcam controller? There we go. Okay, this doesn't want to work. All righty then, we just go close. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm deforming the spiral. See, I make sure that it's well stuck and then with the blunt part of my blade i'm actually going in you can use other stuff that can deform like if you have any of those things for uh silk, silk screens like i have this mod podge that i can use and you do like for one of those chrysanthemum canes
and you do just half of them. Half, leave them as is. So for who is new, I made um, bullseye canes with metallics, or you can use pearlescence. And then I reduced them, and with the reductions, I made these spirals that I am deforming half of them with the same motion that you use to do a chrysanthemum uh, cane. That is with something that's not very sharp, it's more blunt. Just make some impressions. And only on half of the spirals, not all of them. Now, remember the thing on the original technique of Jennifer Patterson, how if you had like four colors and you had two pretty much align them in a certain order. Let's see how that works here. So I have white, 18 karat gold, gold and bronze. So I'm going to start stacking and layering. So white, plain, 18 karat gold deformed, Regular gold, plain, bronze, deformed. White, plain, because it's plain on a deformed. 18 karat gold, deformed on a plain. So see, I shifted one left. Then one plain, no, one, is this deformed? Yeah, this is deformed, so one plain. And then I'm going to have here one deformed of bronze. Then I move one over. And one more over. And I have an extra bronze. I'm going to cram two of them in one spot. So I got this now, right? Kind of push them a little bit together. Be careful because they might want to buckle when you do this motion. And now start getting them in length like this. And remember, whenever you start lengthening a cane, you always want to free it because it will always be stuck. And you'll have the top moving. See how the top moves more than the bottom and you want it to move equally. So turn it upside down and stick it from the working mat. Turn it upside down and lengthen it on this side too, some. And then turn it around again. Now remember, we went like this when we arranged them. So at this point, we can easily stack it. And now start cubing it. Now this part you haven't seen. From here, we go in unknown territory, stuff that hasn't been ever seen before online. What was that thing with the Star Trek? To boldly go where no one has gone before. I was actually, when I was doing my welcome to my channel video, I 
seriously flirted with the idea of doing a Star Trek parody with boldly going when no one has gone before. But then I went with come with me, I will be your guide thing. Okay. Now once you get it a little bit thicker, comes the fun part. Because you need to tilt it. Yeah, to boldly go where no one has done before. You need to tilt it, okay, to get the full effect of it. But you don't, must not tilt it completely on the, especially it would be uh, the tendency to skew it straight like this. No, you only need to skew it a little bit. So see like it where straight like this, you only need to skew it. Yeah, it kind of looks like a chocolate, doesn't it? Skew it just a little bit. See, just like this. This hand goes up, this hand goes down. And then repeat that just to make sure that you skewed enough and it didn't fall back into place. And just flatten the top that's a little pointy with your roller. This has a very, very specific reason to happen. Don't let it come back into the original squarish form. Now just go ahead and kind of cube it. And now we are going to slice it. Yay! Okay, let's grab a piece of wax paper. And I presume you want to see this much closer, right? Am I right? Am I right or not? And we are going now, remember that this was the edge you want to cut on the front. And you want slices, you don't want shavings. Eh? What do you think? How do you think this is going to look when baked? And you can do this uh, bracelet or you can make pendants or you can make combine it with something else. But when it's going to get baked, it's going to be absolutely fabulous. And I'm going to actually make a bracelet. Arrange this on a bracelet. Okay, this was not a very good slice, but... Now, this should be enough. No, I can think I can put it on black, don't you think? Uh, and I think I forgot to bring my easy cuffs from the kitchen. Duh! Not very smart. Not very smart. Okay, let me get this back up. And I've been cleaning and arranging here, and I have no idea what I did with my Easy Cuffs template either. So, 
I shall be right back in less than a minute. Yay, I was able to find it, yay. Okay, because so I'm going to have to use the bracelet as template. Considering I cannot find my template, I probably need to finish cleaning the other desk. Oh yeah, me too. I love the easy cuffs. I'm absolutely thrilled with them. And I have the other um, bangles, you know. But I like the easy cuffs so much better than any other bangle thing. I think I cut enough to make two bracelets. Why am I using the large one? Yeah, and especially I'm trying to, Deborah, I'm trying to build a light box to finish taking photos of my stuff to be able to upload it. And see, I'm kind of mirroring them. So, finishing some things, varnishing other things, getting some stuff on one side to be photographed, you know, it can make things really pretty much a mess. Okay, I'm going to use this one. Yeah, and especially when I have so many things I work on at the same time, it makes things really hard. And if you'd ask me why don't you finish one thing and then move on to the other one, because it would be a, a waste of time, because on some of the things I need to bake them. Some of them I need to varnish them. Some of them I need to finish putting findings on. So if I would get some, you know, I can get some in the oven uh, while I am varnishing another one. And then while the, the ones that are varnished are drying, I can start putting, uh, bonsoir Sylvie, I can start putting finishings on something else. 
So that's why everything is inside out and upside down. And it's the black that always leaves this mark. Okay, you like the effect? And see, I wouldn't want to bring it all the way to the edge because it gives the, the black, it gives it an effect of mosaic. But you'll see when it's baked the full uh, effect. And I'm not going to waste time and varnish it, but once it's baked, I'm going to put it in some water. And, you know, when it's wet, it looks like it's varnished. So you'll be able to see the full effect of it. Oops. Wait, you the covering my face, Sylvie. Nespa. And to tell you a secret now, if you tilt it even more, the whole stack, you will the at each angle you get a different effect. And why I told you to tilt it instead of cutting it diagonally, because if you cut it diagonally, you're going to lose a lot of slices. Mais c'est l'effet de mosaïque. Delphine, ensuite, avec l'extrudeur, tu vas obtenir des complètement différents effets effet uh, parce que parce que les les par, particules de de mica seront arrangées différemment tu dois penser que chaque fois que tu uh, fais n'importe quelle sorte de manipulation de la de d'une d'une pâte qui est uh, avec de la poudre de mica uh, en dépendant des des types de manipulation que tu fais, les euh, particules de mica vont s'arranger dans une certaine façon. Well, tu peux, au lieu de faire des spirales, tu peux tout simplement arranger les exactement comme dans le Hidden Magic. Et ensuite, au lieu de, de mettre un tampon et de, euh, comment est-ce que tu appelles ça, euh, raser par raser, 
tu sais ce que je veux dire. Euh, au lieu de faire ça, tu fais, tu euh, start à les faire euh, dans un sandwich et ensuite tu tranches comme euh, pour une canne. Moi, j'ai voulu obtenir un effet de mosaïque ici. Mais tu peux l'essayer de l'autre façon. Tu auras un, un, un différent aspect des, des pâtes. Bon. So, it's ready to be baked. I would think. Mon Dieu, 4,25. Ça, c'est un tas de serviettes. OK, I will go put this in the oven and I'll be right back. Okay. You know what, I think I'm going to put these back in the stack so I can use them later. Not back in the stack because that's kind of impossible, but in something. I might make a necklace or something. Okay, Serenity, thank you for being here. Yeah, Delphine is very busy. She's got that embroidery thing going on. And it's really, really taking all her time. Okay. Now I can make some stropel canes for my bracelet backings. Right, because I have some of the messed up clay from this morning, from last night, actually, not this morning. And I was trying to do some stuff that didn't work. Oh. I think I'm going to use some um, of the stuff that I got here. I'm going to use the sandwich. On dit que tu es très occupé avec euh, ta broderie. J'ai dit que tu avais une grande commande.
But yeah, I am so curious if that person tried again to get images from my website. So I was minding my own business, doing my own stuff, and then I get this alert from my website. Someone's being downloaded in images. Avec la machine. Ce serait fou d'essayer de, faire ça avec à main. Always help to cut with the sharp side. Remember. Yeah, I know. They always get the wrong idea, especially now, not so much because of my hair color, but remember I said that it's only recently that I uh, started, I changed my hairstyle because it used to be platinum blonde and very long and all that and people saw that I was some kind of ditzy blonde. Now they think that I'm some kind of helpless elderly woman. And for a while I play along, it's actually fun. And then I start giving them a piece of my mind. Can you see what I'm doing here? You can't. So I placed all those uh, crumbles on black and then I put a little bit of bronze here. And I'm going to, I'm making backings for my bracelets and for other stuff. Okay, that hurt. I would say more envious, because I don't know. I don't really want to take anything that they have, so I don't see why they would be jealous unless they have a wrong perception. But, you know, it's kind of stupid. Remember I told you before. And considering the fact that I'm an elderly woman who's got a lot of health issues, it can only say a lot about those people. Hi, Lena. Okay, I'm starting to lose the chat. Okay, I got it back.
Oui, 85, c'est un... C'est beaucoup. Disons que c'est beaucoup. OK, so now I have a whole cane of pretty backing for my bracelet. Let's see how it looks like. I'm going to cut the ends. Yay! Look at this. And considering it's got a lot of uh, metallics. Okay, this thing didn't focus properly. And I'm going to make some Natasha beads out of the ends. Actually, Tina, are you still here? Because Tina wanted, had some issues doing uh, swirly beads. You want to do some swirly beads while that bracelet is baking? Okay, I'll do this a Natasha bead, maybe, and the other one. Get it in a swirly bead. Where's my, there it is. So, which part do I want to swirl? Actually, let me put some more stuff on it. Because it's not swirly enough. Oh, there you go. Trying to get this. And I'm going to cut a few strips. If you want to add some interest to a swirly bead. So it's like this, right? And then get it again in, in your in the palm of your hands. And now see you have all of them coming together in one point. So first of all, make sure that your surface is very clean so it would not stick anywhere. I'm going to actually put a little bit of armor all too to make sure that it's non-sticky all over. And I'm going to wipe my acrylic block too. Because any stickiness might interfere. And then you just see the top is right here. And just do it in place. It might want to walk a little bit. If it does, you just bring it back here. Make sure it's like this. And then start on it again. And the secret is to not press too hard. The wider the circles, the uh, pointier the bead will be. And the more you press, the flatter the bead will be. The secret to get nice spirals is to press very little and do fairly large circles. See how it already started swirling. But do a very, very light pressing. Enough to just kind of hold it in place, but not more. 
let it, if it wants to kind of travel like this, let it travel. See the swelling, it's already starting. And on the back as well. And if you want it even pointier, then you make the circles even bigger. I don't have a big enough acrylic block to make it really long, but you can make it practically like this if you want, if you make the circles long enough. But the longer the bead, the less the swirl is. Oops, okay, stay in there. Sometimes I even got some weird shapes with them when I wasn't careful to put it in the same position to restart. But see, you got all the swirliness. And now this being, of course, this being metallic, it's going to have a whole bunch of stuff going on in it. Okay, now let's do this a Natasha bead. I'm going to kind of turn it inside out a little bit. Then do this. Then do this. And then twisty, twisty, twisty. Twisty, twisty a lot. And you can do two or three times the twisting. I usually don't like to do a lot of twisting. You bend it. You do this again. And some people like at this point to twist it even more. This is pretty much where I like to end, but I like, you've seen, I like less complicated as a pattern designs. I might like all kinds of elaborate, crazy looking jewelry concept, but when it comes to patterns, I'm not very... Okay, so let's do a quadruple Natasha bead. One of those that's got the... doubling on all sizes. Okay, so we have one here, but we also have one here. So we go we practically turn these inside out. That's pretty much what, what's happening. Hold on, let me find them. No, it's not here. I got them wrong. I messed up. La, 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 la. This one is this one. I messed them up. No, Natasha bid. Oh, yeah, there you go. It is here. And then it is here. I found them. And then it is here. I just didn't cut them very nice. And here. So it's equal on all four sizes if I manage to. I just didn't cut it equal. That was my problem. 
Let me try again and this time cut it equal so I can show you better. If I don't manage to put it together, oh, I got another owl or a Chinese lady, something. Oh, what do you know? I didn't manage to get it together properly. Okay, now I don't know if you can see, but it's symmetrical on all four sides. Even if I didn't cut it very nice. So let, you want me to try that again to show you? This time I will pay attention how I got it <laughs> and how I move it around. Let me see what other scraps of clay I got here. I have some white and I have some gold and then that black. Okay, so I get these. And I'm going to twist, 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 twist. And this time I promise I will try to cut it correctly without getting all in a mess. And then I go again like this. And I will twist it a little bit more. And then I just get it together like this and I form it in a cube. Which is very tiny. Okay, so you cut it in four. Then you take the pieces out like this. And then you turn them inside out like this. And now they should match, not with each other. Hold on, there's a way they... <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't sleep all night. I am all confused. Okay, so this goes here. And this goes here. But then, oh yeah. So you match them like this, and then you turn it like this. And then you put it together like this. Did that make any sense? <laughs> but that's how you get the four sides. Natasha beads. Hold on, let me lengthen it a little bit so you can see better. <laughs> okay so see how they are on four sides pretty much yep pretty much now let me try and get this on the uh, 
Oh, that's why it wasn't working because I wasn't looking at my There we go. So it's pretty much, I kind of squished it a little bit, but pretty much that's what you get. So four sides, Natasha beads. And then of course you can get them uh, you can get them like this and then you can even make them into what other than lentil beads. One time I got an oval lentil bead. I have no idea how I did that, but it was an oval lentil bead. And my oven dinged. Give me just a second to finish this and I'll bring that over. There you go. More swirly beads. Okay, let me go bring the bracelet. Okay. Now just a few more seconds and then I'll be able to manipulate it. Okay, there we go. The light is not terrific here at the web camera, but it does have all kinds of uh, opalescence. Give me just a minute to sand it just a little bit. And then I will do a close up.
because see i don't know if you noticed but you get the short cells and then you also get long cells because you have the spiral circles Yeah, now I have no problems making the, the regular lentils, but that time I have no idea what. It was one of the rainy days and my hands were not working the best. So who knows how I held that plate. And it's not fully sanded, but once you, when it gets uh, very finely sanded, the opalescence is absolutely fabulous. Okay, I don't know if you can see the opalescence. The polyfast. You see? Let me try and get it as close as possible. Oh, come on. Because the problem is that I'm not near a window, so I only have the ceiling lamp. Trying to get the best focus in. I guess this is the best I can get. Now I would have to get uh, to post a little video with my other, with a Canon camera on my Facebook page so you can see the full uh, per lessons of it because each of these cells has a center of uh, opalescence because of the way the the clay was in the swirly pattern so once i finish sanding it and varnishing it i will put a small uh, video on my uh, Facebook page so you can see exactly how it looks like when it's finished okay I need now to get the camera back on where it's supposed to be there we go come on get back online Oh yeah, it will be absolutely gorgeous. And with the the opalescence especially, I, I love pearlescence and metallics because of all that uh, chatoyancy that they have. And you can only see in several spots like here in this light, that's the the only problem. But as I said, I will get a small video on the Facebook page so you can see better what's going on. 
but yeah it gives a beautiful uh, mosaic like and not just mosaic like i don't know if you've seen the little the mosaics that are made with the um, pieces like uh, excuse me microscopic tiles of gem semi precious precious gemstones uh, this is how this pattern looks like and so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know which of the per lessons you made it with, but um, personally, to give you an advice, so except for this, because this one looks kind of like a mix of pearl and metallic, uh, you can uh, mix some magenta with translucent, with white pearl, to get and uh, do that in several combinations. I mean, like ooh, two parts magenta, one part red, uh, one part translucent, one part white pearl. Then the next one use more magenta and the third one use more white pearl to have like three or four uh, different tints and shades and use that and you would love it or do the same with the peacock pearl or with the bright green it will be absolutely gorgeous so what this no this one you order it in uh, belgium uh, you can look, if you look on my uh, video list, I have a review of it. It's called Polyfast, and you can see the, the review of it. And, oh, I'm sorry, I guess I'm getting sleepy. There are a couple more people who have done reviews of them. So, what wrong with the camera? No, it's nothing wrong with the camera. Camera is fine. It's me learning the new controls, I told you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I will see you next Sunday. Next Sunday, we will already be doing something, uh, I don't know, more ho holiday-ish. Okay? So, I think I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I've been awake for, gosh, over 12 hours. And so thank you so much for being here with me. And I hope you enjoy making the super extra. I told you, I, I don't even know how to call it because it's not a cane. It's not a mokumegane. It's not a nothing. So, okay. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful Sunday and see you next week. Bye.